On paper, this seems like a superhero team-up of Justice League proportions. We even cross universes with Dr. Manhattan, the Hulk, Sabretooth, Howard Stark, and Batman. The best Batman. So it makes sense that all of these actors are in Spotlight, a real-life story based off of the Boston Globe article, because superheroes and newspapers are practically synonymous. You might wonder why that is. Well, it's basically because nine times out of ten, newspaper movies need superheroes. Because let's face it, they're not all Citizen Kane. And even he voiced a Transformer. Does anyone else find it odd that we're still making newspaper movies in the 21st century? I mean, why not just make a movie about those old-timey bikes with the giant front wheel? Actually, I'd probably watch that. Let me just preface that this is, in fact, a story that took place in the 21st century. But more importantly, it is a compelling story, a human interest story. And what more would you expect from a fall release? I said it before in my The Martian review. This is the time of year where you get great ensemble casts, great actors who really just want to tell this story for the sake of telling the story. Not just because Disney dumps a bazillion dollars on your lap for some summer blockbuster, which is probably why we got Mark Ruffalo, thank goodness, and not Robert Downey Jr. Spotlight shines the light on child molestation and cover-up in the Catholic Church. We've all heard the inappropriate jokes about Catholic priests, but the fact is there is nothing funny about this all-too-common crime. Screenwriter Josh Singer is no stranger to expose news stories either, as one of the only credits he has in Hollywood is the WikiLeaks leaker, The Fifth Estate. Plus, he wrote for Fringe. There's no joke there, I just find it amazing that he can write for kick-ass sci-fi and pertinent exposés. It's important to focus on the writing because Singer really could have taken this film in many different directions. He could have gone the direction of inappropriate jokes. He could have vilified the entire Catholic Church, but instead he focuses on the victims. Which is really saying something because Singer and director Tom McCarthy don't focus on this all-star cast. This story isn't about the reporters reporting the story. It is about the story itself. The unfortunate side to this is nobody in the cast really gets any moment to shine. If you want to see a Rachel McAdams film, this isn't really the film for you. If you want to see a Michael Keaton film, you only get a little bit more of him. Leave Schreiber, Billy Crudup, Stanley Tucci, eh, they're barely in it. The only actor, in fact, to get any moment to shine is Mark Ruffalo. Ironic that once again the Hulk gets the biggest part. This is actually the dark side of having an ensemble cast. It's a case of everything being too spread out so that no one gets a chance to excel, rather than it being evenly spread out so everyone gets a chance to excel. This did create somewhat of a one-note film in my opinion, but as I stated earlier, I don't think it was ever intended to be a character-driven piece. It was really about the story, and the story itself is an eye-opener. And the facts presented in this film are truly frightening. One of the strongest performances comes from the unseen, uncredited Richard Jenkins, who had actually previously worked with Tom McCarthy on the film The Visitor. Through a series of phone interviews only, Jenkins plays A.W. Richard Seep, a former priest turned psychotherapist, who reveals some staggering figures to our team of investigative journalists. One of the most shocking moments of the film is when the Spotlight team confirms with Seep their findings of 15 guilty priests in the Boston area alone. His response? No, that's low. Turns out it's 6% of all priests worldwide. The findings of the original Boston Globe article, and therefore the film, are staggering, as not only does the team discover how many priests are guilty of such a crime in North America, but the fact that these men are then put on sick leave, according to the Catholic Church, and merely moved to another area about a year later. The film does very well to stay unbiased, perhaps more unbiased, than I am. The cast all do a fantastic job to play their part, but I really felt that the script severely lacked tension. Perhaps that's because we know in real life they get the story published. It's like the movie Titanic. You, you kind of know how it's going to end. Spotlight has an amazing cast, and it is a very important story to tell, which I often question with most recent film releases. And while the film is one note, it is still an earn it. However, because it is one note, I feel you could probably miss it in theaters and just catch it on demand or Netflix. And chill? Uh, no, that would be highly inappropriate. Poll question, what is your favorite film based on a true story? As always, leave your answers in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to Real School, follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link, and you can become a Real School patron. But until next time, school's out.